Welcome to the next lecture of introduction to refrigeration under the ages of chemical process utilities. Now, in the previous lecture, we have learned about uh, the various concepts of uh, refrigeration including the introduction to refrigerant. In this particular lecture, we classified about uh, the different kind of refrigerants like halocarbons, hydrocarbons, inorganic compounds, azeotropic mixtures, non-azeotropic mixtures. We discussed about the various kind of a coding system in the refrigerants under the edges of prefix and coding for refrigerant. We discussed about the, the concept of isomers in, in the refrigerant system and uh, we discussed about the introduction to the refrigeration and its history because uh, this refrigeration is uh, having a rich legacy. Now, in this particular uh, lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, the different type of uh, refrigeration system and cycles. Uh, we will discuss about the refrigeration system components, different type of components uh, um, involved in the refrigeration system like compressor, which we will discuss about the compression ratio, then the compression efficiency. And uh, we will discuss about uh, the, uh, the various factors, those who are affecting the compressor efficiency. Uh, then we will discuss about uh, the measures through which we can control the comp uh, compressor capacity. And then we will discuss about the condenser, air cooled condenser, water cooled condenser and evaporative systems. Now, let us talk about uh, the different components of uh, refrigeration system. Now, refrigeration system, there are various uh, mechanical components associated in the refrigeration system. Now, these uh, components uh, are uh, having uh, the condensers, different type of evaporators, uh, compressors, refrigerant lines, piping network. Uh, there are various uh, components attached to the uh, refrigeration system, those who are dedicated to the refrigerant capacity control. There are various receivers, accumulators, etcetera. So, it is a complete uh, uh, system. Now, when we talk about uh, uh, the major components uh, and especially uh, because the refrigeration is governed by the different type of cycles and vapor compression refrigeration cycle is one of the foremost cycle being used in the refrigeration system. So, the major component used in the compressor um, uh, refrigeration system are compressor, condenser, evaporator, throttling devices. Now, uh, question may arise is that uh, for what kind of a different uh, uh, selection criteria to be adopted for components. So, there are various factors need to be considered while we select the uh, various components for the refrigeration system. One is that the maintenance aspect that is the maintaining tool total refrigeration availability uh, while the load varies from 0 to 100 percent. So, it should sustain uh, for the varying load capacity. Then there must be certain uh, factors involved in the frost control because the frost control is again a very crucial aspect in the refrigeration system and this is again very important for the performance application. Then another factor which is very important for uh, the re refrigeration system is the selection of cooling media, expansion refrigerant, pump, recirculation aspect, then secondary coolant, etcetera. Then uh, what should be the system efficiency and how we can maintain it uh, under the edge of uh, maintainability. Then which kind of the condenser we need to use whether air condenser, water condenser or evaporative uh, cooled condenser. Then what should be the, the compressor design and what kind of the system we are using single or compound type of arrangement. So, let us talk about the compressor because the compressor, the, uh, compressor is the heart of uh, any kind of refrigeration system. So, in a refrigeration cycle, the compressor has two main function within the refrigeration system. One is to pump the refrigerant vapor from evaporator so that uh, the desired temperature and pressure can be maintained in the evaporator. Second is uh, to increase the pressure of the refrigerant vapor through the process of compression and simultaneously increase the temperature of the refrigerant vapor. Now, uh, as I told you that it is the heart of vapor compression refrigeration system, it can be divided into two main categories. One is the displacement compressor and other, another one is the dynamic compressors. 
Now, again, um, uh, if uh, we take the classification of uh, compressor, then the broad uh, type of classification can be given uh, in this particular uh, figure that uh, de it deals with uh, displacement as well as dynamic compression system. It may be hermetic, semi hermetic type of to or open type of. So, compressors basically they are divided in two different categories one is the dis displacement compressor and second one is the dynamic compressor. Now, when we talk about uh, the displacement compressors, so again they are divided in five different categories, reciprocating compressor, rotary compressor, vein compressor, screw compressor, scroll compressor and dynamic type of compressor again they are subdivided into two different categories. One is the, the centrifugal compressor and second one is the turbo compressor. Now, um, usually when we talk about uh, the compression units especially in terms of refrigeration cycle, there are various uh, expectations uh, one can have from the compression unit and uh, when in a scientific way we need to chop down all, all these uh, expectations, then they must meet the different requirement like they should be highly reliable in nature. They must possess the long service life uh, because every time if we are changing the system or we are uh, um, facing the difficulty in the maintenance, then the cost factor will be on the higher side. Therefore, it should be easy uh, uh, maintainability concept, they, they should have a easy capacity control and they must have a silent operation that is called the quiet operation. Uh, because in case of if they have a high noise then definitely it may create a noise pollution. They must have the compactness and above all they must possess the low cost aspect. So, all these expectations are desirable for uh, smooth functioning of any kind of a compression especially applicable for the vapor compression refrigeration system. So, since we have discussed there, there are variety of um, uh, uh, compressors available as on date based on the class, classification scheme, then there must be certain criteria for the compressor selection. Now, in the selection of uh, different type of uh, refrigerant, there must be following uh, uh, criteria. Now, first is that what should be the refrigeration capacity? then what different kind of uh, volumetric flow rate we need to have and that purely depend on the design criteria of uh, the refrigeration cycle as well as the refrigerant what we are using in question. Then what uh, compression ratio we are looking for that is again the, the, the major selection criteria and then the thermal and physical properties of the refrigerant are again very important because this, this particular information or this particular properties are uh, essential to look the compatibility issue with respect to the compressor. Then uh, another concept is uh, very prominent that is the compressor capacity and the performance. So, all compressors are rated in terms of how much flow they produce at a given ratio to outlet or to the inlet pressure and that is called the compression ratio. Now, this flow is obviously a function of compressor size that is the number of cylinders and volume displacement for reciprocating compressor and operating speed usually um, represented in RPM. Now, let us talk about the compression ratio. The compression ratio is uh, defined as uh, the ratio of discharge pressure to the suction pressure at saturated uh, condition and usually expressed in terms of absolute terms like uh, Pascal or kilo Pascal. Now, here CR is the compression ratio. This is equal to the saturated uh, discharge pressure represented as KPD and the unit is the kilo Pascal over saturated suction pressure represented as the PS and the, having the unit of kilo Pascal. Now, usually when we talk about the compression in the refrigeration cycle, so the performance uh, uh, is always be a very big challenge. So, the performance of compressor is usually influenced by a number of factors. This includes the compressor speed, this includes the suction pressure, suction temperature, discharge pressure and uh, what kind of refrigerant we are using in that particular refrigeration cycle. So, all these are the contributory factor towards the performance of the compressor. So, when uh, we talk about the, the performance of compression, then we cannot overlook the importance of the compressor efficiency. 
Now, the compressor efficiency is as the ratio of eccentropic work uh, to the actual measured input power. So, the compressor efficiency can be written as compressor efficiency is equal to um, m into h to s minus h upon p. Now, where uh, the, the m is the mass flow rate of uh, refrigerant that is uh, represented in kilogram per second. Uh, H2S is the specific enthalpy of refrigerant vapor at discharge pressure at constant uh, entropy and uh, when S1 is equal to S2 and uh, the unit of uh, this H2S is kilojoule per kilogram. Similarly, this H1 is uh, the specific enthalpy of a refrigerant vapor entering the compressor and that is again having the unit of kilojoule per kilogram. And P is the measured motor input and power and it is having the unit of kilowatt and eta C is the compressor efficiency. Now, let us talk about the volumetric efficiency. Now, it is the ratio of clearance volume to the displacement volume R and the refrigerant specific volumes at the compressor inlet suction that is referred as a suction and exit that is discharge V1 and V2. Uh, so, in mathematically if we need to represent this volumetric efficiency, so this is the volumetric efficiency and 1 minus R that is the displacement volume uh, into V1 upon V2 minus 1. So, that is the, uh, the volumetric efficiency. Now, sometimes people talk about uh, the refrigeration capacity. Now, the refrigeration capacity can be defined in terms of compressor volume displacement rate and that is uh, V and unit is uh, meter cube per second and the compressor volumetric efficiency density of the refrigerant at the compressor inlet that is rho 1 uh, and having the unit of kilogram per meter cube and specific enthalpies of the refrigerant at compressor inlet that is H1 and at expansion valve inlet H4. So, this uh, QR is equal to V eta C V rho 1 into H1 minus H4. Now, there are various factors those who are affecting the compressor efficiency. The most significant to factor that affect the compressor efficiency is the temperature lift or the compression ratio. The other factor those who are affecting um, they are less ex uh, extent they are the temperature sometimes lubrication and cooling, but they do have some sort of uh, uh, effect over the compressor efficiency. Now, the crucial solution to increase the efficiency of the compressor, um, there are certain uh, factors involved like one is the minimization of temperature lift. Now, when the condensing pressure is low and uh, the evaporating pressure is high, the compressor is most efficient which uh, led to minimization of temperature lift and compression ratio. The effect of operating condition is usually given by the compression data um, uh, uh, which we have represented in this particular figure. Now, this figure shows the performance profile of the compressor at a different uh, evaporator and condenser temperature. Now, in a good system design, they should ensure, they should ensure that uh, the condensing pressure is as low as possible and evaporating temperature as high. Now, designing of a system with a small condenser and evaporator is always a false economy to save the capital cost. But by using larger evaporator and condenser with a small compressor, will more reliable to reduce the running cost and that is the rule of thumb. Now, as the compressor does not have hard work and operates with a lower discharge temperatures. Now, another aspect is that is the uh, to, to alter the uh, compressor efficiency is the lowering the suction temperature. Now, when uh, lowering the suction gas temperature, there is a higher capacity with having no effect on the power input the suction uh, line temperature will be lower and uh, there is uh, an increase in the reliability. Therefore, the suction line insulation will become more essential in that uh, particular case. 
Now, another aspect is that the use of effective lubrication and cooling. The compressor um, at every time should be lubricated and efficiently cooled with the help of some kind of a chiller or cooling tower in case of larger equipments used in the industry. Now, due, due to not used lubrication or lubricant after each use, there will be an increased bearing friction and temperature. Therefore, it reduces the compressor efficiency or sometimes may result in failure because of the repeated use and sometimes uh, um, because of the friction, the temperature may go on uh, uh, at the higher level and this may dissociate uh, the various kind of a chemical components in the lubricant and that may create a problem for the op smooth operation of compressor. Now, let us talk about uh, the capacity control aspects of compressor. Now, it is uh, a unit uh, which the compressor ability can be controlled by, uh, by reduce or increase the refrigerant mass flow rate. Now, the compressor flow can improved or improvised uh, with respect to the performance in two ways. One is by using the efficient compressor capacity reduction to prevent the increase in the flow rate of refrigerant at high temperature. Therefore, the coefficient of performance of the compressor at higher temperature, uh, higher ambient can be increased. The second is uh, uh, by change in the system sizing strategy. Now, conventional heat pumps, they are sized for the cooling load so that the comfortable air conditioning can be achieved or can be obtained. Now, with the capacity control, the heat pump can be sized for a greater heating capacity, therefore having a lower balance point and eliminating some of the heating. Now, by using capacity control, the capacity of a unit during the cooling can be controlled to achieve the proper com comfort control. Now, one of the most frequent used method for system uh, capacity control in today is the hot gas bypass. The compressed gas in this particular approach is vented back to the suction side of the compressor. The other possible uh, capacity control method, they falls in, fall into the different categories and especially there are three different categories such as speed control clearance volume control and the valve control. So, let us talk about uh, uh, these things in brief. Uh, so, first uh, the speed control. Now, it can be done either by continuously or in stepwise. The continuous control is uh, usually con uh, this continuous control offers good control down to about 50 percent of rated speed on normal compressor. Now, it is uh, also an expensive method. So, there is a need of replacement of conventional starting control with the motor control to reduce the cost. Now, if we talk about the step control, in step control, this can be achieved by using multipole electric motor and uh, switching the number of active poles. Now, it might be possible to achieve satisfactory improvisation in performance by using a finite number of stepped change uh, to vary, vary compressor capacity. Now, step control is less costly than the continuous uh, variable speed control, but it is also limited to 50 percent of the rated compressor speed because of the lubrication requirement. Another is the clearance volume control. Now, there is a need of substantial amount of uh, an additional clearance volume to achieve the desirable amount of uh, flow reduction. For reduction of say 50 percent of mass flow rate, the clearance volume must be equal to about half of the displacement volume. Larger amount of the mass uh, this co may cause unacceptability with high discharge temperatures with a large amount of uh, flow reduction. So, it is less attractive than other controls. Now, let us talk about the valve control. The suction valve unloading um, is a compressor capacity control method used in large air conditioning and refrigeration system to reduce the cooling capacity when the load is decreased. 
Now, in unloading the suction valve of one or more cylinders, usually they are held upon op open so that uh, the gas is pumped into and back out uh, of the cylinder through the valve without being compressed. Now, due to this uh, repeated throttling through uh, the suction valve, this can cause a substantial loss. Now, newer method of compressor flow regulation via valve control are the late suction valve closing and early suction valve closing. The late suction valve closing result in throttling loss by pumping back out of the suction valve for part of the stroke. Now, it is more acceptable and smoother control than complete valve unloading. This particular method is limited to 50 percent capacity reduction to large low speed compressor. The early section valve closing eliminates the losses due to the throttling gas back out of the suction valve. The suction valve just upstream of the suction valve is closed on the intake stroke which uh, limiting the amount of gas taken in. Now, the continuously variable capacity control over a wide range is possible with early valve closing approaches. Now, this is most efficient and inexpensive approach. Now, let us talk about uh, the uh, ca capacity control measures through uh, varying load. Now, there are several different approaches and ways through which we can uh, control the capacity and one of this is the varying load with the different efficiencies. Now, let us talk about the different cases. Now, case 1 the single large compressor which cannot meet variable load and result in best at capacity uh, the lower efficiency when uh, at par load. Now, case 2 the single large compressor with inbuilt capacity control which is a good option to meet the variable load and the load stays above 50 percent. Another case that is case number 3. This use the three small compressor with the two of uh, the, uh, the same capacity and another one with the capacity control which allow uh, us to close the matching uh, to the demand. Now, case 4, this uses the three different compressor of small capacities. This gives uh, a good option to meet variable load. The aim is to mix and match to varying load with the sequence control. Case number 5, now 3 compressors with the parallel uh, control use some time but not recommended always due to non-linear input power with capacity turned down. For example, at 180 percent capacity 3 at 60 percent requires 240 percent of power due to the inefficiencies and additional input of about say 60 percent. The 3 compressor out of which 2 are on and other, another one is off. In such case, one compressor is used at 100 percent and one is used to obtain the exact demand that is 80 percent in this case giving 180 percent capacity with 188 percent power that is 22 percent saving over uh, if you refer to the case number 5 as a reference media. Now, the controlled strategy, strategy this should be designed for to select uh, the most efficient mix of compressor to meet the load required. Another is to avoid the operation on inbuilt capacity control when possible and third one is to avoid the operation at low suction pressure when possible. Now, for designing of a good control strategy to cycle them. Uh, and selecting compressor of different sizes accurately matching of most common loads is the most efficient option. Now, let us talk about the condensers. There are several uh, condensers to be considered when making a selection for installation. They are air cooled, water cooled, shell and tube, tube type of uh, condenser, shell and coil type of condenser tube within tube and evaporative condensers and each of them have its own applications and cap capabilities. Some of uh, the determining factors include the size and the weight of the unit, weather conditions, locations, maybe city or a rural, availability of electricity and availability of uh, water. These are the other determining factor while selecting the appropriate condenser. 
So, usually when we talk about the selection criteria for condenser, this depends on the condenser heat capacity, what is the heat capacity of the condenser that is one of the design uh, deciding factor. Then condensing temperature and pressure requirement. Apart from this, uh, the flow rates of refrigerant and coolant, they are also the deciding factor for the proper selection criteria of uh, condenser. Then design temperature and uh, what, uh, for water and air and what should be the operating period and the climatic conditions. So, all these are the governing factor for the appropriate selection of the condenser. Now, let us talk about the different type of condensers, those who are being used in the refrigeration industry. One is the water cooled condenser, another one is the air cooled condenser and third one is the evaporative type of condenser. Now, there are common type uh, of uh, water and air cooled refrigerant condensers for commercial uh, refrigeration um, purpose. They are the shell and tube blow through the horizontal air flow, the shell and coil draw through the vertical air flow, tube in tube static or forced air flow. Now, the type of condenser selection depends largely uh, upon uh, the different consideration. One is that uh, what is the size of uh, the cooling load? Second is the different type of refrigeration being used in the refrigeration industry. So, what kind of the refrigeration used and then quality and temperature of available cooling water if required and amount of water that can be circulated if water use is acceptable. Now, water cooled condenser, this is the most common condenser. They are generally shell and tube type a heat exchanger with the refrigerant flow through the shell and water as a coolant. Now, these condensers are widely used in large heat capacities, the refrigerating system and chilling operations like uh, SST type. The lower portion of the shell act like a liquid receiver. It is used with the cooling tower or ground water such as uh, well, lake and uh, river water. Now, here are the some example of uh, the water cooled condensers like ELT tube and tube type of condenser, then shell and tube type of uh, condenser, then shell and coil, then uh, this is AMC or ammonia type of condenser and this is the coaxial type of condenser. Now, for water cooled uh, condenser, uh, different criteria must be examined before uh, we go for a water cooled condenser. One is that what is the requirement of cooling water for heat rejection, the utilization of cooling tower if inexpensive cooling water is available, then the requirement of water treatment in water recirculation type of systems, then what is the space requirement, then maintenance and service situation and the provision of freeze uh, protection substances and tool for winter operation. Now, let us talk about the air cooled uh, condenser. Now, it has uh, the application in domestic, commercial and industrial refrigerating, chilling, freezing and air conditioning system with a common capacity of 20 to 120 tons. The centrifugal fan air cooled condenser with a capacity of 3 to 100 tons they are particularly used for the heat recovery and auxiliary ventilation application. Now, they employ outside air as a, a cooling media because air is having uh, thermal uh, properties. Now, the fan uh, draws air past the refrigeration coil and the latent heat of the refrigeration is removed as sensible heat by the air stream. Now, here you see this is the typical um, air cooled condenser. Now, there are various advantages uh, are associated with the uh, air cooled condenser. One is that uh, there is no requirement for water, then uh, we are having the standard outdoor installation. You can elimination, uh, you can eliminate the freezing, scaling and corrosion problem. Uh, the elimination of water piping, circulation pumps and water treatment etcetera, they are not present, low installation cost and apart from this because we are not addressing these kind of corrosion scaling etcetera problem, then the cost of the maintenance and service requirement would be very low. But simultaneously, there are various disadvantages associated with air cooled condenser. One is that the high condensing temperature high refrigerant cost because of the long piping runs, high power requirement per kilowatt of cooling, high no noise intensity 
and multiple units required for the large capacity system. Now, let us talk about uh, the evaporative condensers. Now, evaporative condensers, they are apparently water cooled designed and work on principle of cooling by evaporating water into a moving air system. Now, evaporative condensers, they use water sprays and air flow to condense the refrigerant vapor inside the tubes. The condensed refrigerant drains into a tank and that is called a liquid receiver. Now, refrigerant subcooling, this can be accomplished by piping uh, the liquid from the receiver back through the water sump where additional cooling reduces the liquid temperature even further. Now, here you see um, this is uh, the, the evaporative uh, condenser, here you see that uh, the water is spray and droplets. Now, the fluid uh, to be cooled is uh, circulating through the inside tubes and heat is transferred to the water outside dropping to the downward as uh, per this, uh, this figure. The air is forced upward through the coil and evaporating a small amount of water by absorbing latent heat of vaporization and discharging this heat to the atmosphere. Now, the water used by the evaporative condenser is significant and um, not only water evaporate just to reject the heat, but water must be added to avoid the build up to of dissolved solids falling on the surface or in the basin of the condenser. Now, there are various characteristics of evaporative condenser. One is that reduced circulating water for a given capacity, then water treatment is necessary every time and small piping sizes and short overall length. Um, the small system pumps, uh, availability of large capacity unit and indoor configuration. So, in this particular uh, lecture, we discussed about the various component of uh, refrigeration system um, and uh, if you need to have a further study, we have enlisted couple of references for your convenience. You can go through all these uh, references if needed. Thank you very much.